In March, the United Nations released this report. It said there were 107 economies that face at least one of the three risks. Number one, rising food prices. Number two, rising energy prices. And three, tougher financial conditions. 107 countries face these risks. Together, they represent 1.7 billion people. That's more than one-fifth of humanity. There are 69 countries that face all the three risks, food, energy, finance, all three. 69 countries could go the Sri Lanka way. 25 in Africa, 25 in the Asia Pacific, and 19 in Latin America. Which countries are these? We'll start with Egypt, the land of pharaohs. It is in the throes of a financial crisis. Egypt is the world's largest importer of wheat. Russia and Ukraine were its top suppliers. As they fight now, the supplies are running out. Last month, Egypt said that its wheat reserves will not last more than three months. Next, we have Tunisia, the birthplace of the Arab Spring. Its economy is overheating. Foreign debt accounts for 100% of its GDP. The trade deficit has widened to $800 million. Inflation stands at 7%. Fuel prices at record highs. Experts say Tunisia could soon face civil unrest. The same warning has been issued for Lebanon. The Switzerland of West Asia, well, not anymore. In 2020, the Beirut blasts destroyed Lebanon's largest grain stores. Food prices went up by 11 times. The Lebanese pound lost 90% of its value. Public debt grew to 360% of the GDP. The war in Ukraine complicated things further. Lebanon imported 80% of its wheat from Ukraine. Those supplies have fallen. There's a bread shortage. A scarcity of sunflower oil. Lebanon has been forced to take a $150 million loan from the World Bank to ensure food security. Then we have Argentina, the land of tango, also caught on the wrong foot now. Inflation is paralyzing its economy. External debt is mounting. Argentina has defaulted on debt repayments nine times. To avoid a tenth default, it has gone to the IMF. It wants to refinance a $45 billion loan. It may give Argentina a brief reprieve, but it will not quell the civil unrest. Analysts say Argentina is staring at a long and cold winter this year. Some other Latin American countries are also at risk, like El Salvador and Peru. They face hyperinflation in commodities, tumbling bonds, food shortages, detonating prices and mass unemployment. Very much like Sri Lanka. Reports say both countries could soon face civil unrest. In sub-Saharan Africa, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, Ethiopia could be the worst hit. In Ghana, debt levels are soaring. Interest payments are choking the economy. A debt crisis looks imminent. In Kenya, the debt has climbed to $70 billion. That's 70% of its GDP. Last week, they got a $244 million loan from the IMF to weather this economic storm. In South Africa, the debt has reached 80% of its GDP. There's a looming threat of state collapse, a rerun of the 2021 civil unrest. Next comes Turkey. The currency is sliding, the debt is soaring, upwards of 54% of the GDP. Inflation has touched 70%. GDP forecast cut to 3.3%. There's a food shortage. Turkey is getting 50,000 tons of wheat from India. And these were just a few examples. The World Bank says that in the next 12 months, as many as a dozen developing economies may not be able to service their debt. This will be the largest debt crisis in a generation. What about India? It will feel the impact. A few state economies are already inching towards a debt crisis. In Punjab, West Bengal, Bihar and Andhra Pradesh, the debt to GDP ratio is identical to Sri Lanka's. On the 3rd of April, Indian bureaucrats expressed concern. They said populist measures in these states could ruin their economies and leave them broke like Sri Lanka. Now, here's the thing. The entire world is in debt distress. National budgets are at breaking point. Some governments are being forced to cut spending. Others are borrowing more to stay afloat. What can we do to stop this? How can the world prevent a debt typhoon? 